is it possible for us to admire women that don't absolutely believe in the same things that we all believe, right? So if I am a vegan and I have somebody who is, you know, steak, advertising steak and how good meat is for you, can I take a quote from that woman when she's talking about the importance of protecting our environment and maybe admire that part of her and not blanket her as this crazy woman. Therefore, I should never even, you know, engage her in conversation or be very careful in um, honoring the good in her. So this is a major problem, ladies. Okay. Because of the work that I do and what I do is I teach women from every different forms of, uh, you know, every different, I'm sorry, every different walks of life every different culture, different belief system, different way of thinking, because the foundation of being woman and human is basic. And so I have women who say, January, I cannot believe you got that quote from that woman. I disagree with her. January, I cannot believe that you are, you know, um, following that crazy person. Um, I just think that, you know, I, I don't even want to like your page. I've had this woman who said, January, I don't want to like your page because of somebody you're following. That's totally fine. But here's my gentle challenge for you, ladies. Is it possible for us to honor the good in people and not nitpick their life? Is it possible for me to say, you know, I love that part about her. That's actually so good. She's doing something so beautiful for, you know, Africa or for, you know, for women or for the children or for mothers or for politicians. But you know what? That part of her, I'm not crazy about. But I have the eyes and the maturity to honor people and women in spite of me not loving every part of them. The problem is that we're so afraid to honor the good the parts of different people, right? Because we don't want to associate ourselves with people that might have different beliefs. This is exactly why we have wars, that we can't acknowledge the good parts of women, of men, and say, oh, don't want to touch out with a 10-foot pole. I only want to associate myself with people that actually believe entirely the same as me. You know what that is? It's called division and it's called isolation. And so here's an act of courage I'm going to invite you ladies. And can you tell I'm pretty fierce about this? I'm fierce about it because the division is so palpable when it comes to women and belief system and religion. And yes, we don't have to agree in everything. That's not the way the world, the, that's not the way God designed it. I come from the Philippines. We have a very different belief system and the way we do things and, and the way we, you know, we, our culture, right? But then I'm also very American. And so for me, I can appreciate how people believe different, different, different things. The danger is when we are so afraid to associate with a different with people that might not have the entire belief system that we believe and we almost blanket them and judge them and nitpick their life and we are walking into the same kind of woman that's causing division in the world. So my gentle challenge for you ladies is don't be afraid to honor the good in people that might not have the entire belief system that you do. You know, I get... Um, I get criticized for this quite often. And I will tell you, you know, January, I cannot believe that you um, are studying um, Napoleon Hill, which is Think and Grow Rich. I picked up that book, not because of money. I picked up that book because I was in a crisis of trying to figure out what I was here on earth for. And somebody recommended the book because they said, oh, it's not really about money. It's really about your riches and country." Con contribution towards humanity. So I picked that book up. And then I've got some people like, oh, why do you believe in, you know, why do you admire that woman when the way they treat women um, or treat babies or, you know, politicians? And so I get the grunt of this conversation. And, you know, in grace, it takes a lot of grace and prayer, honestly, ladies, to say, you know what, I can see the good in people and admire them for what they are. I'm not here to be the judge of every part of their life and what they do, what they don't do, is it possible for us women to honor women where they are and their story in spite of the fact that maybe parts of them we don't agree? Can we have that much courage to be able to reach down the aisle and say, that's okay. I honor that part of you. That's good. 
I admire that part of you. That's good. I don't necessarily agree with that part of you, but I honor, I honor the good that's in you. And I respect you as a woman. I respect you as a human being. And be at peace with the fact that that's our role. <laughs> that's our role as women is to bridge the gaps. Can we sit and break bread with people who don't believe in the same things? And what is the consequence if we don't? What is the consequence of us not being able to reach down the aisle and have genuine, beautiful conversation and care for people who have different beliefs? The consequence is division. So my question for you is, are you divisive in your thought and the way we judge and isolate ourselves, Or are you... How, do you have the level of maturity to look at situations and in spite what the different parts of their life can isolate the good and honor women? And I think it's time for us to be that kind of woman. I think there's enough division. There's enough anxiety. There's enough anger. There's enough palpable separation that's costing us our freedom. You know, we need women that are willing to go into the different, the unknown, the uncomfortable and sit there in conversation, in genuine sincerity, learn from people, and be curious about their life. Oh, Jane, you have to be careful. You have to be careful. We can sit with the tax collectors, the Mayor Magdalene's, right? Whatever you think would that be to you, that's not necessarily just kind of, you know, but people that are different, people that we feel like are outcast, at least in our tribe. Can we? And not only can we, are we called to, right? Because if not us, then who? If not you, then who? It requires an act of courage. It requires for us women to be so confident in our value. This is why I teach self-worth, that our worth is never contingent on what everybody else thinks, but rather an objective gift from the divine from God himself. Therefore, it's not shaken by other people's criticism or other people's belief system. We know who we are and we are loved as we are. Therefore, there is no fear, right? Isn't the absence of love fear? And so if you can be the woman who can live in freedom because you're not afraid, because you know who you are, then you are free to honor the good in every different person you meet and see that might not have the same beliefs as you, but you can see the good in them without fearing that you're going to get influenced, that you're going to get, um, you know, pummeled because you know who you are and you know your value. But more importantly, isn't it time for us to be a woman who unifies and not create division?